ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you're wearing your overalls tonight because things are about to get dirty in the homesteady ring. Tonight, the age-old question that's haunted humankind since the dawn of man. The chicken versus the duck. Which one should you have on your homestead? We're gonna find out tonight during the Homestead Smackdown. Let's introduce you to the contenders. On my right-hand side, weighing in at 160 acres, with 40 geese, 30 chickens, four barn cats, two guard dogs, six cattle, and of course, the animal he came here to represent, the duck. He'll be managing 40 of them this year on Goldshaw Farm. It's Morgan, release the Quacken! I am here. He's here. <laughs> Weighing in at 52 acres on the other side, because I don't remember which side I started with. He's he got right. ducks, he's got pigs and goats, 12 turkeys, a quarter acre hop yard, 2,400 barrels of beer, a farm dog, a couple of farm kids, and of course, he made me say trillions upon trillions of microbes. That's very Johnny. He's got a thousand broilers, 75 egg layers, representing why the chicken crossed the road. John, John the Egg Exterminator Siskovich. Ladies and gentlemen, very happy, very excitedly here on the Homesteady Show today. It is an absolute joy. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> how are you feeling tonight? Let's get ready to regenerate! Working on that one. We'll see if the audience likes it. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, everybody. We're going to have a ton of fun tonight, and hopefully we're going to help you answer the question of what animal should you bring on your homestead next? Should it be chickens? Should it be ducks? Maybe both? Of course, you at home can listen, you can watch if you're watching live or the YouTube video later. You can decide who wins on your homestead. Uh, but we, of course, like to have an actual winner here. We're not big fans of participation awards at Homesteady. So we brought in a special judge. Now this judge, I know you're gonna be glad to see him. First, you gotta know a little bit about him. Whether he'd like to admit it or not, he is a homesteader. He has gardens, raised beds actually, and I've seen them, they're beautiful, they're better looking than mine. And he officially is a livestock owner. Let's welcome our guest judge for tonight, Accountant Mike. Welcome to the room. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, it's nice to be here. Um, I have uh, joined the wrong Zoom meeting and uh, does anyone know how to leave <laughs> once you do that? Um, Lock the door, lock my, it behind uh, him, don't uh, let him uh, out. Everything is big and I'm, I'm lost. You're officially a livestock owner, Accountant Mike. A lot's changed since you've been on the homestead. Why is show. that? What do you have? Tell us about your livestock. You have a stock. Well, uh, you it's know, alive. I had a moment of clarity uh, during the uh, this uh, pandemic, which I guess is over now. And uh, <laughs> I bought a rabbit, and uh, the rabbit has grown a lot since since then. And the rabbit is giant now, and he's still growing. You have one mission tonight, Accountant Mike. You're used to giving us your thumbs up, your thumbs down. Tonight, we're going to try to sell you on the next livestock to bring to your homestead. Is it going to be the chicken, or is it going to be the duck? I am purely your moderator tonight. I'm going to be having our two experts here guide us through this decision. Accountant Mike's going to decide on his end who's our winner for tonight. But you viewers at home, let us know in the comments section. Those of you watching live, let us know in the comments. And we got Jack from The Mindful Homestead. If you're watching Jack at The Mindful Homestead, check out his channel. Jack does a great job modding for us. And um, glad, Jack, glad you're here tonight. So we got a couple other familiar faces. Thank you, everybody. Let's get started. We have a couple rounds. Let's start with round one. Round one, the production round. This is all about production. You want to feed your family from your land. What is the best livestock to do that with? Is it chicken wings on Sunday with your buddies? Or maybe a fancy evening with the missus, enjoying some duck larange? Which livestock will produce better? Is it gonna be the chicken or is it going to be the duck? You decide and of course Accountant Mike will help us. I'm gonna ask Johnny, heads or tails? 
Ooh, I'm going heads. Tails? Morgan, I guess that means it's your choice. Are you going first or you're gonna let Johnny? We'll actually choose to go second. Oh, oh, oh all right. Oh. I like and it. I think it's always let to let let him let him let get it in the second half here. That's oh, a smart oh, man oh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that puts Johnny up. So Johnny, round one, you have to convince us, why is the chicken the better production animal for Accountant Mike to bring to his homestead? You're gonna give us your pitch, and then we're gonna allow Morgan a rebuttal. So first, right now, Johnny, you got the floor, it's yours. Tell us why right. are chickens the right choice? I represent the chicken because the chicken is a is a superior animal for a whole lot of reasons. It uh it brings me endless joy, which there's a you'll find that in the Venn diagram of ducks and chickens that we have a lot in common. And at the end of the day, I think both of us could get a participation award because you could go with ducks or chickens and be a happy person. But what I have on my farm and how I utilize my birds, our parent company is the food cycle. We're about regenerative reusing, taking everything from the field into the house and our dinner plates back into the scrap bucket, back onto the farm and using every piece of everything that we create here. Now with chickens, they are true omnivores and do a fantastic job at processing kitchen scraps. So my egg chickens, I bring out my compost. I never have anything sitting around for too long because once you drop that compost in the chicken run, they destroy it. It's They're all about it. They're eating it up. And then they're turning that into some delicious, nutritious eggs for me. And then my meat birds, I want to capture the sunlight. I want to you know make a hay while the sun's shining. Uh, I only raise them in the summertime when I can move them on on grass and they're adding nitrogen and fertilizer to my fields, which is feeding the soil, which is feeding my grass, which is feeding future chickens and my goats. There is no better way to add fertility into your land than rotationally grazing chickens where ducks tend to be stuck in one place because they have to have a water element, a water feature. I like it. He comes out swinging already. I like it. A little more difficult for the rotated And is telling culture. lies. <laughs> <laughs> Even as you, as you can rotate the ducks, uh, you have to get water out to them. And they make that water, they destroy it. You know, there's just a little less work for me. So I have a lower investment uh, into my birds uh, up front. I can recycle my kitchen scraps and the other materials from my farm. They're aerators, they turn compost piles. You get a multi-use animal out of a chicken where a duck, uh, let's face it, they're cute, they're wonderful, they flop around, they make great noises, but I got a lot more utility out of the chicken. So when a homesteader like Accountant Mike is looking at his backyard and he's saying, you know, I wanna bring something other than one bunny to this backyard. When you look out, you have your, you, we already know you got about 75 layers year round. They're laying eggs. You guys are using those eggs. You got the meat birds. What kind of production could a homesteader bring onto his homestead with a flock of chickens? Tell us what that looks like. With a flock of egg laying chickens, your and ducks or chickens, the devil's in the details. If you are, are you, if you do a good job, of taking care of your animals, noticing the little things and how they affect the big things, keep them happy, keep them dry in the winter, but you don't have to keep them necessarily with heat and warmth, uh, but as long as they're dry and they have a balanced diet and they have plenty of space to run around and they're not sitting on their poop, you'll get consistent egg production throughout the year where it's gonna drop off in the winter down to maybe 60 to 70%, where you'll get up to 90, 95%. So that's almost an egg every day. You know, chicken lays an egg about once every 25 hours. Uh, and at any given time, there were multiple eggs and multiple stages of being an egg inside of the chicken. And uh, we're gonna be pooping eggs out all over the place uh, year round. And the quality of the egg is gonna change based off their diet and their available forage. Um, but on a reg uh, pretty consistent basis, if you keep them low stress, well-fed and happy, uh, you're gonna see a decent production uh, throughout the year. So a homesteader could expect to almost the entire year uh, with the right amount of birds and the right care, keep themselves in farm fresh eggs. With an egg laying chicken, depending on the breed, you're going to see anywhere from 220 to 290 
eggs per year. There's natural drop off in the winter. You know, they're not, they're going to lay eggs in the summer, six out of every seven days. Um, but you can expect around the, you know, for a productive layer, about 280, uh, 290 eggs a year. Tell us for those who've never had that farm fresh egg experience, Johnny, the chicken, what is it going to give you in a farm fresh egg? Why is that experience better than getting it from the supermarket? I just reread the omnivores dilemma, which was, I highly recommend because it, it says everything that I would hope to say to you in a longer form. And, uh, Michael Pollan talks about meeting with Joel Salatin and Joel Salatin selling eggs to chefs and he would crack an egg in his hand and then bounce the yolk around in between his hands uh, because the quality of egg that you're going to get from a farm fresh egg uh, is so vastly different because what you have in the store can be sold up to 45 days after it was packaged. That's not after it came out of the back of the chicken. That's after it went from the farm to the washing and packing facility got washed and packed, put in a carton and date stamped. And it could be up to 45 days later that you see that egg. And that chicken will have been raised in a less than ideal setting, probably in some kind of confinement operation where they are optimized for production and not necessarily for health, nutrition, and happiness. And that's what we're looking for. So you're going to see yolks that stand up, whites that are a lot tighter. You're going to have a rich, uh, creamy flavor to it where if they just tastes so much better. It's when you, when you crack a store egg in the pan and it's watery and it runs everywhere and you can never do a sunny side up egg because your yolks just split. You're going to see a night and day difference when you have a deep orange beta carotene rich uh, chicken egg cracked in your frying pan and you crack the two side by side and you'll see the night and day right there. To get this farm fresh egg, what kind of work daily chores is a homesteader going to put into chickens? On a day to day basis, you can do almost nothing. You know, as long as they have appropriate feed, water, and space, and their space is uh, kept dry and pretty clean, which you can manage with shavings um, and poop boards, and there's lots of clever ways to manage your birds. But if you put a little thought and a little research into your setup initially, in the winter, there's a sacrifice area where they're going to be pretty stagnant throughout the year. In the summer, if you have some kind of chicken tractor that you can move them around, you're going to spread that poop around. And when you spread the poop around, you don't have to clean the coop out. So for me, I have 50 birds on farm. We're, we're filling out the flock a little bit this spring. I actually have birds coming at the end of the month, but I throw some feed out. I make sure they have clean, fresh water and the day-to-day -day chores are really, really simple. So we know how much work to expect. Not too much, nice, simple chores, a couple big days, you know, doing this or that, but on average, not a lot of work, amazing quality product. And you mentioned some of the extra benefits. Before we go over now to our rebuttal with Morgan, Set us up with one more point to remember here, Johnny. When you compare production of the chicken to the production of a duck, why is the chicken a superior producer on a small little homestead? This is tough. I'm going to give a, a, a nod to Morgan here just before he even gets on that I have uh, production egg laying ducks where I get 320 eggs a year and they, they'll beat my chickens. You know, and uh, it depends on the type of eggs you like, you know, it's not just quantity, but it's the type and quality of egg that you want. I have very productive ducks, but my family and my customers aren't as keen on duck eggs. So I find more use. I have de higher demand for my chickens without going into costs, uh, higher demand for my chicken eggs than I do for the duck eggs where I would, I could expand chickens tomorrow, but ducks, I would have difficulty. I've had difficulty moving duck eggs in the past. What about when we cross over into your specialty, the world of meat? Chickens for meat at the end of the day for ducks and for chickens, the hardest part is processing. And when it comes to having to take that life and then turn it into dinner, chickens are easier to process than ducks. There's a reason why ducks aren't a larger scale, <laughs> and that's because processing is a nightmare, and we can get into that. Um, we should. This for... is a really good point. I think for a homesteader especially, you got a big point. You, we're going to have a hard choice between the egg thing. You already admitted that. But this is a good point here, this butchering element. So you can get a variety of chickens that will give you a variety of chicken meat where the slowing, slower growing birds uh, are going to be more flavorful, flavorful, but the meat's going to be a little bit tougher because, you know, the difference between red meat and white meat is movement and blood flow. So a bird that's been around longer is going to have more red meat. Duck is a, a bird with flight. So you're going to get a different quality of meat as well. 
But with the chickens, whether you have a fast growing Cornish cross type bird or a Cornish cross, you know, whatever, similar, something like a red ranger down to a heritage bird where you're processing your, your egg birds, you're going to get an easier processing day, which is the most difficult day on the farm. Really awesome points as far as production goes, because we do have to think of that whole chain account at Mike, right? It's not just the meat and the bird, but you got to, how do you get it there at the end of the day? A lot to consider about the eggs. Accountant Mike. Gears grinding in your head yet? Of course they are. Any question for John before we bring in Morgan for the rebuttal? Yes. All right. First question. Hi, John. How you doing? You all right? Oh, fantastic. Life is good. Life okay. Is good. All right. Good. I was curious uh, to hear this question because we're talking about production and production in my mind means like it's kind of a, of a numbers thing. We're going to talk finance in a minute. Do you have a sense how many chickens like the average family eats in a year? Absolutely. So, and okay. I sized my chicken tractor to fit that. So if you, it depends on the size of everything in agriculture can be answered with, well, yes, it depends. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, are you a family of two or a family of four? Do you have a big extended family? And so if you're going to raise a batch of birds, start with at least 25. You know, that's a good size bird or a good size batch. You can start with as small as 10, but if you start with three meat birds, you might lose all three of them. And are we talking meat production? Yeah. 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 Eat, I would eating think so. Yeah. Eating. Them. Um, <clears throat> my chicken tractor at two square feet per bird fits 30 chickens in it. Uh, and if you figure a chicken every other week throughout the entire year, and you might give one or two away, somebody's, you know, you know, inevitably somebody's going to be curious and want to eat some of your birds. You can, in the summer, while the the grass is growing and the sun is shining, raise in one chicken tractor, two batches of birds, do 60, cut your teeth on the first one and start to grow a market or sell a few to cover your costs and then grow a second batch of birds because there's such a quick turnaround. Um, And then you've got a chicken every other week in your freezer, or you can do a chicken every single week uh, and freeze them and you're good for the entire year. So between 30 and 60 depends on how friendly you are and how big your family is. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. John, have you ever successfully stood an egg up on its end? <laughs> I've never tried. All right. I've never tried. Okay. <laughs> no further right. questions, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Qualifies me as an expert. <laughs> no, I saw it on I saw it on a TV show once, but I don't know if you can actually do it. Seems great. Like it's just gonna fall over, right? Excellent first round. Excellent first round. But now it's time to bring in our second contender for his rebuttal of the chicken. Morgan, as we said in the beginning, you do have quite a lot of chickens on your homestead, which means, let's see, what do we say, 30 chickens? You have some experience with this animal. You have officially two minutes. I'll put it on the timer. Let's do this. Let's do it, you're on. So chickens are harder to raise than ducks, full stop. Chickens have more disease issues. They have more issues with, you know, whether it be mites or frostbite on their comb or other issues like that. There's interflock violence that's much more harmful than it is with ducks. I have seen rooster on rooster violence, hen on rooster violence, hen on hen violence. It happens all over the place. Chickens are cannibals. Like, let's not ignore this fact. that Chickens are absolutely cannibals and they will peck and eat each other if given the chance. (laughs) And so when people think about raising an animal and what life do you wanna bring to your farm or homestead, you have to recognize that chickens come with a fair amount of baggage. And so I would caution anybody in thinking about chickens as in, you know, they're easy and all you need to do is just, you know, toss them some feed and make sure they got a waterer ready to go and that's all it takes because it it is hard and there are challenges with chickens and, and you can have some real issues with chickens that when I compare them to ducks, it's hands down much harder to deal with, particularly when you're thinking about two adult flocks, one adult flock of ducks versus one adult flock of chickens. It's just much harder to deal with. And, and so that would be my primary rebuttal. You know, meanwhile, you look at those ducks where they're producing more eggs, they're a lot friendlier, they're a lot more disease resistant. 
you know, that to me makes it an easy choice. Really good rebuttal and pretty much right on time. So we'll get you there, Morgan, because we're going to lead right into your segment here, which is when we're looking at production. What animal do we want to bring? What should accountant Mike bring next? Why are ducks the better producer? So we've been raising ducks here on our farm. We're about to start our fifth season of it. We started with just egg laying ducks. We've evolved into also doing meat ducks. We've also evolved into doing, you know, hatching and selling live birds as well as selling hatching eggs. So let, let, let me acknowledge a couple of weaknesses before I dive into the hardcore part of production. Yes, it's actually harder to brood ducks. So raising baby ducks is harder than raising baby chickens. But once you get them to adult, it's much easier to deal with those ducks. Number two, when it comes to ducks, they are messy and you gotta just be ready for it and have systems in place to manage that mess. But when I think about the production you get from ducks, it absolutely becomes worth it. John made the point earlier. Yeah, I find that you know our egg laying breeds of ducks are producing somewhere between 300 and 320 eggs per year. So that's as good, if not better than a hardcore egg laying chicken breed. And then if you think about trying to just raise ducks straight up for meat, you know, you could look at a breed like the Jumbo Pekin and you're getting a heavier bird in the same amount of time when compared to the Cornish cross chicken, which is usually kind of the popular one. And you can raise them in chicken tractors. In fact, I've raised ducks in these really well-designed chicken tractors before. Uh, <laughs> and, and it works out just as good as if you were doing um, a, a flock of chickens. And, and so the idea that you can get more meat and more eggs from those same birds compared to chickens, I think that, that actually is one of those things that's eye-opening. Then when you think about the duck egg itself, right? The duck egg is about one and a half times the size of a chicken egg. So you're actually getting more egg per, per egg as you're thinking about it. So if you're thinking about just like sheer weight of food, you're going to get more food from those egg laying ducks. Number two, when you think about the meat, right? There's just a lot more value in the duck meat. Yes, it's harder to process. Those waterproof feathers make it very difficult to get a clean bird. And that hard day of the year, and actually Jack from the Mindful Homestead has been up when we've done ducks and geese on our farm. It, he'll, he'll vouch for it. It sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> it's, it, it's a rough day. But people go crazy over duck. Like you think about it, right? Chicken is like the everyday common staple on, on a person's plate on, on their home. But duck, that's a special occasion. That's something that makes people say, wow, if you gift somebody a duck as, as something that they can put in their freezer, they will be blown away. And so if you really want to stand out and if you really want to make an impact with folks, you're going to be able to do that much easier with ducks versus chickens just, you know chicken like i mean and I, i'm not saying that a pasture raised chicken is the same thing as like those weird like you know skinless boneless breasts that some people buy in a, a supermarket but when you think about it it's not nearly the special occasion meal that you get from a duck that is a really good angle that that extra level that you get from that duck that extra essence uh, what are some things that the duck egg you mentioned the difference in the egg itself and the size what are some uses the homesteaders that maybe are brand new they don't know about duck eggs how do you expand the the um the possibilities for the duck egg usage yeah so so, so when the folks who buy duck eggs for me and i've got like a hardcore group of customers who are buying duck eggs even though it's not really a core business for us anymore they are bakers. They are people who like to make things with duck eggs. The duck egg itself, like I said, is a little bit larger. Also, a larger percentage of the egg is actually yolk versus white. And so it makes things a little bit richer. It makes things a little bit creamier. You know, if you're baking with it, if you're making mayonnaise with it, like all of those things become just a little bit more special if you're using a duck egg versus, say, using a chicken egg. And, and, and so I, I think that that's, that's a big difference too. So it's, again, the duck is the thing that's going to make you stand out. Now, one element that is very unique to the duck, and you mentioned the messy factor, uh, how water ties in. Does a homesteader who's planning on bringing ducks need to have any kind of water for the duck there on their homestead ready for them? So, so the, the big myth with raising ducks is that you need a pond or you need a stream or some sort of body of water for them to swim in. That is not the case. 
you know, a kiddie pool, like, uh, you know, uh, a five gallon, you know, pan can work great. They just need water where they can dunk their head in and, you know, kind of wash their face and swish their food around and they will make that water filthy. And so to have a system where you have a number of different water containers scattered around where you want your ducks to congregate and you can dump it out at the end of the day is really what I found to be the best strategy, particularly if you're doing it at a homestead scale. And, and so, yes, you need to give them water. Yes, you need to give them more water than you would with your chickens. But it's not the massive setup and it's not a requirement of a pond that some people often have in their head as the image of what ducks need. You know, that dumping out the water, um, you're talking about them being a messier animal. Johnny talked about what kind of work is involved in the chickens each day, and it sounded actually pretty easy. Uh, how about ducks? What's our daily workload as a homesteader going to look like? Yeah, so, so it's not that different to John's point. You know, you're essentially, if you have your core infrastructure set up and you have, you know, your systems for feed and you, you have what you need, you, you know, the biggest extra chore is probably an extra five minutes to run a bucket of, of water out to them. And so, you know, typically what we're doing in the summer months with our ducks is we're strategically stationing, stationing water stations throughout our, our permaculture orchard so that the, the birds aren't making too big an impact in any one spot for too long. And then, you know, you move them on to, you know, another part and another part and another part. That's typically what we found makes, makes the best impact. In the winter months, just like John said with the chickens, you're typically having some sort of sacrifice area where, yeah, they're going to beat the heck out of it. And you got to just be okay with that being kind of a mud hole. And then you can fill it in with some wood chips when, when all said and done. Um, but, but, you know, the workload I have found when I compare it to what I spend the time on the chickens versus the ducks is not significantly different. So last remark to keep in our mind here as we switch over into the rebuttal, why are ducks going to be the better producer for a homesteader than the chicken? Well, like I said, they're going to give you more. They're going to give you a bigger bang for your buck, and it's going to be a little bit more special. And, and I think that those are the elements that are there. Yeah, it's slightly more work um, when it comes to processing. I mean, sorry, I shouldn't say slightly. It's a lot more work when it comes to processing. <laughs> You've never but it's only death. slightly more work when you think about the day-to-day -day chores. And then you also have that upside advantage of once you have an adult duck they are very, very hardy. They are very, very resilient, you know, short of occasionally having a case of bumblefoot, like, you know, once a year, you know, you don't find that many ailments with ducks when compared to chickens. Awesome. Uh, Accountant Mike, do you have a question before we uh, move into the rebuttal about ducks for Morgan? I do. Yeah, I've got two questions for Morgan. I bet you can guess what my second one is. Uh, the first question is, you said at the beginning that they are a little harder, um, in the very beginning with brooding. Can you give me an, an idea, like kind of a scale of what you mean? Like how much harder are they? Or is it that you're more likely to lose some? Do they need more? What is it? Yeah, no, I, I actually find that they're they're about the same in terms of mortality if I'm comparing uh, ducklings to chicks. The bigger issue is the water. So ducklings will make a big mess. They will dunk their head in their water. They will splash it around. They'll get the shavings wetter. And it just becomes a much messier situation when compared to brooding chicks. And, mm. and so that's what makes it harder. That's why, like, for example, when I'm raising my, my ducklings and goslings, I'm trying to get them outside as soon as possible, even if I'm having to bring them in at night, just because, you know, there's nothing grosser than a whole bunch of like duck poop and wet shavings, which is what will always happen when you're brooding. And, and so that is why they're harder. Okay. All right, cool. Second question for you. Have you ever stood an egg up on its end? <laughs> no, I've never tried it either. I, All right. I, 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 but but here's what I have it. done. I've made an omelet in my pocket. Oh, who kicked that? All right, I think our moderator will John, you must have made an omelet with play. your pocket too. Come on, man. <laughs> All <laughs> I right. I just had this one egg and it just sort of is in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's time today, for actually. rebuttal. <laughs> Johnny, you've heard what he said. I know I've been to Camps Road Farm. I've seen ducks in ponds. You got some experience. Let's have two minutes on the clock. Are you ready for your two minute rebuttal? Oh, I'm ready. All I'm right. Ready. This is tough because I just love all poultry. I disagree with how strongly Morgan said that chickens are brutal 
and they're cannibals because yes that is a behavior that you're very much less likely to see in ducks and it is more of a possibility with chickens but it is a factor of management and you can manage and not like my chickens don't beat the beat the crap out of each other they'll chase each other around and stuff but it's not the brutal hellish wasteland that it kind of seemed like what morgan was describing <laughs> you know like if if they have enough space and they have enough food and they have things to keep them busy we're good i do i also have a hard time swallowing uh getting the same carcass size from a meat duck in the same period of time as a cornish cross broiler there's so so much time and money and engineering has been put into that bird that there's no way any kind of meat duck has been bred to the same capabilities that I can get a four and a half pound carcass weight in 45 days on pasture with a Cornish cross bird. Look at the jumbo I, pecan, man, the jumbo pecan. <laughs> oh man. But other than that, I mean, a lot of good points. I mean, I, I like having so few ducks that I can just keep them around my pond because I, then I don't have to deal with carrying water. If you're carrying <laughs> water, you have, a, you have a limited amount of numbers. Like there's a ticker in your shoulders for how many times you could do that until the shoulders are gone and you can no longer do that. So then you have to run water all over the farm and figure out where your hoses, where your drops, Five where seconds. the chickens. I've got a reservoir. They're all set, easy to manage, super clean. And in the brooder with brooding chicks, because they're clean. And that's the uh, time. Oh, okay. We'll get into it. Guys, this has been a fantastic round one. Accountant Mike, you have a lot to think about, but you're gonna have even more because it's time for round two. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been a fan of Homesteady for any amount of time, if you've listened to the podcast, you could go all the way back to episode one and there's something you would know about Accountant Mike. He likes to give his thumbs up or thumbs down on whether or not you should get an animal purely, solely off of one thing. Stacking them sats, ching ching, we're talking money. Round two, which animal will make you more cash? We all know we're farming to get rich. You wanna make a million farming? Start with two. In this round, Morgan, you have the floor. You've run a farm business. We're all farm entrepreneurs here. We've all tried to squeeze a buck out of, the, out of those eggs. Tell us why the duck is the better choice for the homesteader who wants to make a little side money off of his property. Sure, so when it comes down to it, like I said earlier, I find that there are revenue sources you can generate in multiple places. And if you wanna have a good financially kind of viable model when it comes to the ducks, I think that that's an important piece. You know, let's start with eggs, number one. You know, I find that, you know, typically I can charge, you know, this is what, these are my prices from last year. Um, I was charging $6 for a dozen duck eggs, $5 for a dozen chicken eggs, but actually my mo more popular unit to sell was actually half dozen duck eggs, which was at $4 a, a half dozen. So if you're thinking about it kind of from a pricing perspective, right? There is a little bit of a price premium you can charge. And if I'm looking at my numbers in terms of feed costs and comparing those elements, ducks are just slightly, and I'm talking, um, hold on a second. I, I can actually give you some numbers, Mike, because I know you'll care about this. Um, <laughs> Morgan's listening to my the podcast. Cost, my, my cost per unit for a dozen duck eggs was a dollar and two cents last year. My cost per unit for a dozen chicken eggs was 90 cents. So, so if you're looking at, you know, essentially those are apples to apples numbers, kind of comparing the production of the two, it's slightly cheaper to produce those chicken eggs, but it's much more profitable to sell those duck eggs. And, and so that's kind of one benefit I see. Benefit number two is I actually have, I, I've, I'm not trying to do just pure duck meat anymore. I actually focus my meat operation on goose, which if I actually want to talk about what's the better bird, Compare them to ducks, chickens, uh, turkeys, whatever. Rematch. The geese are the best animal to raise for the farmer homestead, but that's a whole separate episode, probably. If I'm keep if I'm keeping it to ducks, though, typically what I found is a really good model for people if they're doing it at a small scale is you collect a whole bunch of eggs, you sell your eggs, but you also have a hatching operation. You can sell ducklings pretty easily in the spring months and into the summer. 
You then raise the birds that you don't sell. You can take those females and add them to your flock as part of your layer operation. But then because with ducks, and I mean, this is true with chickens too, you need to maintain a certain uh, ratio of males to females where it's, you know, typically five or six females for every male. What you can do is cull your drakes. And so when you cull those drakes, you then have something that you can either put in your freezer and eat yourself or have something you can sell to somebody or give to somebody. And so again, that's not going to be as big a bird as if you're doing production meat ducks like the jumbo pecan, which I was referring to earlier. But you can get a four pound bird who's, you know, a little bit older, like I'm talking like 16 weeks old. And, and you can have those as, as, you know, freezer stuffers as well. And so that to me is sort of the combination of things that makes ducks a very vi viable financial enterprise. Then if I throw on top of it, the biggest money maker from all my pro poultry operations, which is hatching eggs, that becomes the real benefit as well. But you can do that with chickens. You can do that with geese. You can do that with any bird. Really, really good points there, Morgan. Really good points. Now, uh, when we're talking about making money off of our product, uh, something maybe go into a bit more. When you look at the demand, what are people willing to pay for chicken versus duck eggs? You talked about your prices. Uh, you know, having the channel, talking to people all over the place, is it generally what you said, that extra dollar for a duck egg? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I find that, you know, it's one of those things where, you're going to find it like weird for a lot of people to buy duck eggs and you're going to get kind of a weird look, Guys, but put, yeah. the people who are into them are way into them. So there are people who have chicken egg allergies who go crazy over duck eggs, which Austin, I know you and I have the opposite mm. situation, but there are people who have chicken egg allergies. Duck eggs are perfect. There are, like I said earlier, bakers and people who are making food products where duck eggs just make for a better output for them, they become the hardcore fan. And so if you can build a base of customers who are really seeking that duck egg, you actually can charge that premium and you can have a much more profitable egg product when compared to chicken eggs. And, you know, you think about it, and I'm not sure about other parts of the country, but I know around here, everybody's got a backyard flock. So you, your neighbor's probably selling backyard chicken eggs for like $3 a dozen, which doesn't even probably make financial sense for most people, but that's your competition. You're not going to find that as much with duck eggs. And so that helps you stand out a little bit. I think kind of from a business competitive differentiation standpoint, that has some value there as well. Accountant Mike, I know the, the calculator upstairs is, is spinning. Are you ready for your cross-examination? I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. All right. You have the floor, and Morgan, you can answer all the questions Accountant Mike has. All right. Just a couple of questions for you because we're keeping it nice and easy. Um, I, I think you're generally right about there is a smaller market for the duck eggs, but once you find the market, you can kind of, you'll resell to that market. Can you give me a sense of how difficult it was to find that market successfully? Yeah, I mean, it, it took me a good two years to build up a base of solid customers. And and I mean, you know, I, I, I would still say that it's not a primary business for me. And I made the choice as I was looking at, you know, I do this process every year where I look at all the different things that my farm does and say, here's what's profitable, here's what's not, here's what's, you know, worth it, here's what's not, and dialing things up and down. I When I first started my farm, my dream and vision was, oh, I'm just going to be like one big duck egg producer guy. Like that's going to be the thing I focus in on. And I learned very quickly that that was not going to make sense. And so I dialed that back. Now I do it at a small scale and, and to give you a sense of scale, right? So I sold, uh, let's see, 23 half dozen packs last year and 46 dozen packs. So that's not a lot at all. It's that's like so a small, tiny thing. Yeah. It's a side output relative to doing hatching eggs and relative to selling live birds, which are much bigger parts of my business. But again, that, that gets to, the, I think, what it makes for any good farm business strategy, right, is to not just do it in isolation for one thing, but have multiple pieces of the puzzle and have the life cycle of the animal contribute to different businesses as you're going through it along the way. All right, cool. Uh, great answer. You're doing fantastic. I got another question for you. Uh, you gave me some, you, you told me that your cost of goods for the, for the dozen eggs is about a dollar and two cents. We don't have to go line by line or anything, but can you give me an idea of what costs you're including in that total? Sure. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of all the basics. You, you got, uh, elements of feed, you've got elements of housing, 
you know, um, there's like a, there is a labor line item I have um, when it comes to it as well. But you also have to recognize this gets spread across a number of different industries, right? So mm-hmm. how I think of cost allocation when I'm thinking about my live bird operation versus my hatching egg operation versus my, my um, just egg operation, I'm allocating basically cost objects across each of those things. And so mm-hmm. that drags my feed costs way down. And so yeah. if I was just doing duck eggs for sale and I wasn't doing these other businesses, my feed costs would be higher, but because I can allocate across these other businesses as well, like yeah. it, it brings down my cost per, per unit significantly. Okay. Are you including any like infrastructure costs in there or not? Uh, yeah, the cost of uh, buying the stress-free trick and tractor plans that gets gets amortized into there. Uh, the, the Link cost below. Of those stress-free trick and tractors that that got that gets baked into there as well. So so yes, the, the stress therapy for building the stress uh, stress-free trick and tractors. <laughs> All right, last question for you. Um, so if ducks could talk, what kind of accent do you think they would have? <laughs> Oh, I, I think they would definitely be like Australian and not like an urban Australian, but much more of like a rural Australian. Oh, out there I, 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 I think that that's pretty much what the universally okay. accepted duck voice would come across as. All right. All right. Cool. Good. I so really want to see a Goldshaw farm with that little camera on a duck. And the whole time it was good night, mate. Narrated in an Australian <laughs> accent. That's your next YouTube Make video. Make that go you viral. Go. Please. Right. <laughs> Started here. <laughs>
we have the bigger audience and the easier uh, easier way to get it to the table there. Wait, I, which I will I will concede that one right out. Of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I'll tell you is this, you know, like I said earlier, the best bird to raise is a goose. <laughs> I would probably be raising several thousand geese at this point per year. If I could find a way to process find that, the process, but, but off farm and not have to do it all myself. Um, but that has become the limiting factor that I have not found somebody in the Northeast. Like I'm so, talking oh, yeah, <laughs> a range totally. of like 300 miles from my farm that would be willing to process the geese. And, and so that is my limiting factor. So and, that is a so, real, yeah, yeah really big point that. there. The other, the other thing I would say with uh, chickens being everybody's favorite poultry, we're just going to come out and say it, uh, <laughs> is that there's a larger resource base to source your, we'll say raw materials, your baby chicks, uh, where that's good. You're, you're Morgan's in the egg hatching business because there are a few hatcheries. Uh, but there's also less known about the genetics, less uh, developed genetic lines where we shouldn't be pumping out of our homesteads the single most productive thing that we can do we're finding a good balance between what is more heritage and natural flavorful and something that not only we want to consume, but, uh, the, you know, if we're selling this, then the general public wants to consume. When we get into that market, we have more options with chickens on which chickens we want to raise. Where do we start with what bloodlines? Uh, there's more hatcheries so you can get them closer. You can be more competitive on the pricing on your chicks where, um, with duck hatcheries, those are a little bit fewer and further in between. So your input costs may be harder, higher and harder to source with ducks, uh, where they could be lower, more available, and have some flexibility with chickens. Very, very good points. I know Accountant Mike's probably uh, chomping at the bit for the cross-examination. Are you ready, Accountant Mike? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Although I'm terrified because John just said a minute ago that are, there's 20 billion chickens on the planet. Uh, I, I I botched the number and I, I haven't slept much lately. So like my, okay. all my, all my stats are, are All right. Thank crazy. God. Cause but yeah, that's there's, terrifying. No, there's, uh, if there's seven and a half billion people, you know, we're pushing 8 billion people. There's way more than 20 billion chickens. Right so now. the beauty it's of the, editing Johnny's going to call me on my phone and leave a message tomorrow with the correct number, and I'm going to edit it in flawlessly, and it'll, it'll are look we, perfect. Are we live right now? Is and our, the, the people watching live, they're big fans. They're just going to oh, play it cool, right? Our, our mod, Jack, he's going to just let that disappear into uh, history. No. <laughs> just, just in America alone, uh, every year we consume 8 billion chickens. That's crazy. That's just the U.S. Okay, I have some actual questions for you, John. And I'm going to okay. test you. You are a, a, a man who knows your business, or at least knows your business numbers, which is the same thing. So here's my question for you. What is your, if, you're, if you have chickens on your farm, would you recommend selling meat or selling eggs? And then if you can answer also, what's your profit margin on those two items? Uh, I was going over this today, actually. Uh, oh. There was a few, I wonder few why. Li a few line <laughs> items that I had to add in there. Like, oh, did you know the importance of grit and how that affects your feed conversion ratio and how that you know, builds out through your entire flock? Um, I would go, so if I'm just making money, I have to ask myself what my goals are. Do I want to make the most money I can in the shortest period of time? Am I in it for the long haul? See, the reason why I really love raising chickens for meat is because you can iterate quickly. You can mess up a small batch of birds and then mess up another batch and then mess up another one a little less. And you've got a two month turnaround for each product where it takes 16 weeks, 16 to 24 weeks for a chicken to lay its first egg. And in that time, when you're raising a baby chick to the time it's going to lay its first egg, you can make a lot of mistakes there that are going to mm. affect your production over the long time, long haul. So then you could have a chicken for the next two years of its peak production life cycle that is only operates at 60 to 70 percent um, efficiency because you fed it layer feed the entire time. And now it's organs and some of its joints have calcified and it can't push an egg out as easily as if you had fed it grower feed, but you didn't know that because you were beginning. So that's, there's mistakes that you can make starting an egg operation that can last throughout a two and a half year duration. Uh, or if you keep your birds longer where for birds for meat, 
you can make uh, some mistakes and they'll be slightly less efficient, but in a short period of time, you're going to see a quicker return. That's why with meat birds, I'm getting that return on investment faster and I can make those mistakes and grow as a farmer. Okay. All right. My other question for you is basically, um, I think that Morgan's right about the smaller market, but a more, um, but a deeper market, if you will, right? Uh, how do you combat that? If you are kind of more of a, you know, if, if everybody's selling a chicken meat bird, how do you differentiate yourself? What do you do to, to win in that arena? The wonderful thing about uh, raising poultry in a healthy and more sustainable manner is that there are more people doing it, but there's not a lot of people doing it. I raise a mm-hmm. thousand chickens a year. There's 30,000 people in the town next to me. I have a broader audience that will cover any small scale that I could possibly come up with because there's, I don't know how many million people in just Connecticut. Um, and we, we, I distribute beer all over the state, you know? And so having easy access to a big market, I'm not going to grow to a scale where I have to find avenues. It's just, it'll be easier to move. Um, and I don't have to search for those pockets of fewer and deeper customers. All right. Have you ever made beer can chicken? I have. And the wonderful thing about being a brewery owner is that we have blank cans with no labels on them. Uh So they're, it's clean aluminum that you, when you stick it up the back of the bird, it's got no lid on it. And when you put it in the bird, I'm not worried about anything cooking off and going into my meat that I'm feeding to my children. And that's why you only buy local beer can chicken. That's beautiful. Right? Hey, hey awesome. I'm going to break up your format here for a second. But John just made a really excellent point, too, that I think is worth talking about just in general in this whole conversation, yeah. which is market type. And, you know, if I compare, John, where you live and, you know, kind of western connecticut right relative to where i live in northeastern vermont you know it is such a different population density where our state capital has like seven thousand people in it so like the idea that like you have available customers there does dictate how you think about your business strategy and so so much more of my business strategy is driven less on going to the local farmers market every week and selling to folks in the area versus having things that I can draw people in to want to come to get yeah, or that I can ship out. And so I think for folks who are thinking about this and listening to this conversation and thinking about their own ideas for business, think about the market you're in because that's going to dictate a lot of your strategy as well. I'm awesome also point. an hour and a half outside of New York City and I get $8 a dozen for my eggs, <laughs> you know, and I was doing $6 a half dozen for duck eggs, which, you know, it scales up to $12 a dozen. Yeah. Right. Um, which I, I can't even get like, I'm, I'm like almost half that for, for everything I'm selling. And that's, and I'm expensive, you know, here in Pennsylvania, we keep getting told, well, you have to sell your eggs for $2 a dozen or no one's going to buy it. So you take that I'll spectrum right there. Yep. Well, accountant Mike's already made that. Clear. All right. Wait, I have, I have one more question for John. <laughs> no, I've never okay. stood up an egg on its end. <laughs> no, I asked that already. Okay, John, the real question for you is if your chickens could talk with a voice, what accent would they have? I love that Morgan went with Australian because chickens were not actually first developed for eggs or meat, but for cockfighting. Uh, and mostly in Thailand and Southeast Asia. So I feel like the original Gallus Gallus, uh, before we moved over to Gallus Domesticus, uh, would have carried over a Southeast Asian uh, accent. Okay. okay, like a Thai accent? Yeah, we'll go with Thai accent. I like it. All right, so so I'll, I'll take some notes. Australian versus Thai. <laughs> I should have had Accountant Mike plan our bonus round. He has some really great questions, but he got those in there anyway. Here's what we got to do. At this point, you viewers at home, you saw round one, and now you've seen round two. Viewers at home, listeners on the podcast, give a point for round one, give a point for round two, and Accountant Mike is going to do the same. Obviously, round one and round two, only two rounds means there could be a tie. And we do not give out participation awards in the homesteady, homestead smackdown ring. And that's why we have the bonus round. In the bonus round, our, our, while they've been warned about round one and round two, our contestants have no idea what I'm about to ask them to do.
So we're going to give you five minutes, grab a pen and a piece of paper, write us a short poem explaining why your animal is the right pick. Accountant Mike is a big fan <laughs> of poetry and that'll help him make his decision. So I you guys it. take five minutes. I hope you're enjoying the Smackdown as much as I am. We're going to hear in just a minute who the winner is. But before we do, I wanted to tell you about the new series on our YouTube channel. This series is designed to help you get started with egg laying chickens. If you've wanted to for years get started homesteading, get some chickens, but have been held back or overwhelmed by all the decisions, this series is designed to help you get from point A, wanting to get some chickens, to point B, eating your own farm fresh eggs. There's also a very handy printout that goes along with this series, which will help you make the decisions you need to and keep track of all the information you'll need to getting those first chickens. So if you wanna watch this brand new series, there is a link in the description of this podcast. You can binge the entire series. All of the episodes in this series are short, sweet, fun, and educational, and will help you get started with chickens don't worry, in the future, of course, we'll have a Just Start duck series. It's only fair. Now let's get back to the bonus round. We're going to yeah. go into our final round, the bonus round. We're going to give chickens the floor first. And of course, a little poetry always sounds better when put to a little beat. We got that beat playing for you. Oh, that timer Ooh, every cell time. Phone. <laughs> yeah. That's really catchy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I could jam that cell phone. Thing. That's, that's a tricky, uh, this is a tricky poetry reading here. Are you ready to convince us this is your final chance to win over Accountant Mike? Are you ready, Johnny? Here we go. All right. Now, when I started a farm, I was eager to learn. I started with poultry and gave several types a turn. Geese, chickens, turkeys, and ducks. What I needed was focus and a chance to make bucks. With the chips on the table and all the numbers crunched, chicken was the winner when I went to cook dinner. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that was surprisingly good. That was really good. Yeah, really good. Are you sure you I, want to be raising I, animals? I, I, I have to go get some water. I just lit my microphone on fire. <laughs> oh, smoke in there. That's terrible. <laughs> that is a tough act to follow. Morgan, are you ready? I don't think I ever can be, but let's do this. Here's the beat. <laughs> Some say duck eggs are yummy. Some say ducks bring good luck. John says he prefers chickens, but I don't give a duck. <laughs> Jump talk right to the end. <laughs> Accountant Mike, I think you're gonna need a little time to deliberate. You gotta separate your emotional feelings and your own personal homestead from the reality that is. What you say here is gonna change the surface of the planet. People are literally going to hear your words. What is the better option? And they're gonna turn around and they're gonna order that. And from a Google, maps satellite image in five years when it finally catches up to present time we will see more of one than the other simply because of what you say this is a very serious decision you have to make and i'm going to give you a few minutes to deliberate okay meanwhile i'm going to talk to the the our very first smackdown contenders guys i could not have picked a better <laughs> all-star cast for round one uh johnny let's start with you man if people want to see more from all the different things you got going on we got camp road farm we got farm marketing solutions uh the youtube the podcast which is back up and running again tell us a little bit about what you got and where people can find you so i've uh i've been in and out of you know i've been a content creator for over a decade now and i've been you know like you said blogs youtube podcast all the things and i wanted to make it easy for people to navigate digest and get the content they need when they need it because our mission statement at farm marketing solutions is to inspire and educate the next generation of farmers and you can do all of that at farmmarketingsolutions.com and i don't publish a new video or a new podcast every single week i kind of shake it up but i do send an email out so at the bottom of that homepage on farm marketing solutions you can sign up for my email list and i don't do salesy stuff uh i do educational 
And uh, you'll get an email whenever I put out a new uh, piece of content. The three out of the four of us all have Siskovich tractors in our backyard. And Accountant Mike, we're <laughs> going to work on them. We're going to get a, we're going to, at least for that bunny, he can have a little outdoor Siskovich I, tractor. I, I, I do have the book. He's got I have the, the book. book somewhere. So hey, look, look, I will debate John night and day on ducks and chickens, but hands down, his chicken tractor, because I've, I've experimented with a lot of awful designs and done a lot of things <laughs> that are not good for chicken tractors. He, he nailed it with that. It's totally worth buying that book and, and I, building that chicken got, tractor specifically. I got to give it to to Morgan because thanks to Morgan, a picture of my chicken tractor design was in the New York Times. <laughs> Whoa. I love it. You guys, yeah. The, uh, the synergy is palpable. <laughs> Morgan, if people want to follow what you're doing, you also have a podcast. Morgan, tell us about your podcast. Tell us about your YouTube channel. What else? Where can people find you in Goldshaw Farm? Goldshaw Farm, pretty much anywhere. We do usually about three YouTube videos a week, do, you know, two to five TikToks a day. TikTok's actually probably our biggest platform these days. Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want. Our podcast is out there, which gets done semi-regularly. Um, but yeah, just look for Goldshaw Farm. And it's really just trying to tell stories about what's happening on our small farm here in Vermont, where we have ducks and geese and chickens and guard dogs and barn cats and cattle and trees and all sorts of adventures. It's really cool. If you, if you look back, Morgan, John, me, and accountant Mike, we literally all grew up within like a little tiny radius out of Connecticut. And none of us grew up farming and accountant Mike still isn't, but we're working on him. <laughs> and I think it's pretty cool that we all wound up here, guys. We've been working hard together over the last decade to, to do the little things we can. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Uh, you know, I know you were guinea pigs and you didn't know everything to expect tonight. This show has been awesome. I've re this has been one of my favorite podcast recordings. So thank both of you. And if you guys are watching at home or you're listening to the podcast, I'll have links to Farm Marketing Solutions, All Johnny Stuff. I'll have Goldshaw Farm, all Morgan's stuff. And uh, of course, as always, Accountant Mike, we could not do the first inaugural SmackDown without you being our guest judge. So as always, thank you. With that, we will bring Accountant Mike back on and uh, we will hear what we've all been okay. waiting for. The planet is in your hands. Here's the thing, guys, here we are. With the caveat that I think this question can't really be answered because it depends on your situation, I'm going to bifurcate my answer. But in the interest of assigning a winner, I will assign a winner. I mean, I guess my uh, the thing that I would say from my standpoint, I would not be doing any kind of farm enterprise with the interest of making money, right? That wouldn't be the goal. <laughs> yeah. so for me, it's... You've known me way too long to do that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not intending to make any money. I think for, for us, we eat a whole bunch of chicken, like a whole bunch. And I think Morgan's right that Ducks are a little more special, but I think if it was me and I'm going to be doing the work every day, I want to really replace a staple of my Interesting. diet. Interesting. So I think if if it was Mike getting into farming, oh man! First of all, the the world has ended, obviously. So it has to, and then you're definitely not worried about money. I think if it was me, I'd be going for chickens because we I would be going to replace the food that we eat, and we eat much more chicken than we do duck. Okay. I think in the real world, if you're looking to bring something onto your homestead primarily for yourself that you're mostly gonna eat, I think you should go chickens because I think it's more versatile as far as the food goes. I think if you're doing this to make money, you should go ducks because I think the premium you get on the, on the cost is just, it's, it's really, it's wild, you know? Um, and I think that Morgan's right, like it's, it might be a little bit harder to get to your um, to your target market, but once you find it, it's very deep, right? And if you're doing this to make money, a, a year or two of not making any money is is going to be fine. In the interest of uh, picking a winner out of the, you know, completely, I'm going to review my notes here. Which is legit. I took action. It really notes. is coming down to the freestyle battle rap. I just want to bring that up. <laughs> it, it yeah, I mean, like, there is something to be said for there. There. Uh, I think uh, uh, looking at this, let's see, John was the first one to mention the term participation award. So, you know, he kind of he started a little weak, if I'm honest with you. 
Um, but then, and, and then you know, Morgan hit him with interflock violence, which is bad, obviously. <laughs> But uh, I think I'm going to give it to Johnny. because I think you should go chickens. There you have it, That's folks. crazy. We have a winner. The very first episode. Hey, hey, hey congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, what do you have to say for yourself? I'm just, I couldn't be more proud right now. I know that once I hang up, I'm going to call my mom and she's going to be in tears. <laughs> that I've won a homesteady with Account Mike. I may get a new tattoo. Oh, I mean, wow, yes. The sky is the limit now. I've got that on record. Name a child after me. I keep getting people to try to, I keep trying to get people to do that. I owe him one of those. I do first, owe him first one name of those. Account, middle yeah. name. <laughs> That's it. Well, guys, thank you so much. This has been historic. At least, Morgan, you can sleep tonight knowing you got second place, so that is still really good. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I will also be calling my mom and bragging, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Let us know in the chat box who you think won. If you're listening to the podcast, you know. Connecticut won. But <laughs> state. Uh, let us know who you think. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for watching. This has been epic. I knew this would be so much fun, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Johnny, Morgan, and Accountant Mike, thank you guys for being part of the very first, if we get a good reaction, hopefully not the last, SmackDown, because there are a ton more livestock to go through. So if you'd like to see another SmackDown, let us know in the comments section or on social media, and let us know who you'd like us to pit against each other. Is it gonna be sheep and goats? Uh, SmackDown of epic biblical proportion? Is it geese. going to be? I, I, want, I want a geese versus turkeys. Ge that, oh, that's, the, that's, that's a good that's one. A good right one. And Morgan's gonna come back swinging for geese. He wants a victory, so maybe we'll have to plan that. <laughs> let us know in the comments, who do you wanna see? And uh, also, if you would like to be a guest judge, if you have a homestead and you're trying to decide and you'd like to fill that role, Accountant Mike always does an incredible job. But if we can help somebody out there choose a livestock for their homestead, I have a form. I'll put it in the links of this episode. You can fill out a form to be a guest judge and uh, let us know who you would like to help deciding between. And if we get enough interest, we'll do a lot more of these homestead smackdowns. Guys, thank you so much for being part of Homesteady History. I couldn't pick a better bunch of guys. This was a blast. Come visit Connecticut. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys all next week. Good night, everybody. Adios. <laughs> I don't know what happens now. Does he just stop the stream? Oh, no, now, now, now it's oh. just five minutes of us awkwardly sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so everything's good. So I've started taking vitamins. <laughs> great. I do have your book, John. I'm pretty sure it's up by my bed. I started like actually reading it.